Okay, so for those asking how I made the beginning where it's like this. Um, kind of like those chips, um, those chirps or whatever. What I did is I'm going to make a new version of this. So select Vox 2 or the vocals. Um, and if you go to the little sample logo thing right here on the far left corner, you can create and unique, and it will make a unique version of that that won't manipulate the first one. So now we have this, I'm going to put it in its own effects bus. And I'm going to go to uh, Vocoder, which is Vocodex. This is the voc vocoder that I use um, when making uh, those sounds. And if you go to uh, Chord, you'll be able to make the chord that it actually is, which I think is... Let me make sure that this is right. So now it makes it sound like that. So basically, now that we have that, everything under, everything above of uh, an Edison uh, plugin will record everything that's going on above that Edison. So if I were to put an Edison before the Vocodex, the only thing that would be recording in that channel would be what's being manipulated prior to the Vocodex. Everything after will include the Vocodex. So if we go to uh, Edison and put it be uh, after uh, the Vocodex, it will record that sample with the Vocodex on top. If I were to put it before, it would record everything before the Vocodex. So if I were to put this here instead, which I'm doing with just the scroll wheel on my mouse, um, it'll it won't manipulate, it, it won't record the Vocodex, but everything before it will. So now that we have an Edison here, I'm just going to record. So, yeah. And then I want to do it again with if I go here and record, it'll keep recording on top of what I already have. So I'm going to record this again as well, or just continue. Basically what I did was I got cuts from this and I added some reverb after so it would be like this so I grab a part so I can oh I can go in here and and I just found bits that were you know and that's how I made the beginning sound like this parts of this and then I obviously um, there was uh, with the mic I actually got some cuts of me going like ch ch cut, cut, uh, uh, and layered that on top with the vocodex and that makes this sound 
right over here. Let me go to my desktop real quick. Steve Chills. There we go. So yeah, if you look up here, free read structure. Now I have the sounds in here. So back to packs. And then then I have this chirp, which is uh, a few chaps. It's this cut. So that was made with me going to Edison. And of course I took out low end, so and then it also has some uh what is it? Oh, uh fruity free filter, which is like a filter effect. And then that has high pass for So I took out some of the low end on that and then added like a free filter. So see how that sounds like kind of what's going on in the back here. So once I added that, I, I put the, the filter in there. Um, and then I exported it. So I can go here. Uh, reverb. Or I mean, uh, export. And then, so now I have this part. So now I can actually like cut it up. Hopefully. Go to snap and put one half beat, and then that'll be that one step. So I go like this, put it in its own. Okay, so the cuts are this long. Yep, just like that. So we go to half beat, and then we place them on every other. So with this, this is like a slip. Basically, it changes where what's selected on here. If the sample is longer than where you cut, you're able to, um, if you take off the snap, you're able to switch what you're looking at. select this part, replace it, go to none again, you're more, you're, you're more freely to be able to move the sample. You know, you can even change how this works. Um, Move this here. Move it again. This is only one part of the acapella. This the whole acapella is like it's pretty long, <laughs> but. there. 
this. So now I have this, it'll loop again, and then I'll just add reverb to all these parts. So this is the same sample, I just changed what's being shown in that clip. So now if I go to FX, go to like a, a separate channel, like 9 or 10, 10's empty, so I'll throw it here, and then I can add reverb and fill in that empty space. So reverb's here. <laughs> That's the closest I'll get, but for now. Yeah, we like this. And then we can change the declicking, or we can do like a crossfade. Uh, Probably not on all of them. So uh, if I go to crossfading, transient, then there's like a small transient bleed. Uh, then you're able to cut parts with it being smooth enough where it doesn't sound like it's being cut off. Because if you cut off like a wave, if you cut off like um, a waveform where it's not all the way down, you'll hear the sudden stop. And this basically like lowers the volume, like kind of like a fade. <laughs> Then I can uh, grab this whole thing and copy it. And that's with shift. Shift, and once you have the all diagonal all the directions, you're able to grab the whole thing and move it. Um, if you want to layer it with a second sample, you can just hold shift and click. And it'll make it louder, but for this case we don't need to do that. Um, but just a little tip out there. So once we have this all the way here, Obviously, with um, the redding, the red that comes out in the back is showing how strong the sound is, and how strong that um, it is in, in that frequency. So you can just match that with how high any the volume is. If I were to bring this up, you know, plus six decibels, then it's kind of piercing. It's 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 not easy on the ears. So we just lower it down. Or if it's right, you want it in the back. You don't want it too. Too strong, you know. It's not the forefront of the track. It's supposed to be atmospheric. It's supposed to fill in that empty space. So that we can go back to reverb, maybe take out some dry. Fills that atmosphere. It's not too strong. It's not too much in your face. And you know, it's still there. So it's not just, you know, if I were to take it out completely, it changes it from. If I wanted to do the second one of that, then I can go in here, back into Edison, record that entire process without having to do the whole thing all over again. So now that I have this, I can grab it, the whole thing's selected at this point. Um, we can drag it right under, and now that we have it here, um, shift, if you shift, and uh, use a scroll mouse, you're able to go up and down and precisely put where it needs to be.
So right now I'm just scroll, I'm using the scroll mouse and the shift. And that's what is able to just put it back into place. So now that I have two parts of it, I can make this like a higher pitch, a lower pitch. <laughs> So now that we have the vocals here, um, it goes something like this. So I'm just going to copy both of these, shift, wait for that. Say, uh, that symbol to come up, and then you're able to drag the whole thing. And then here is where I grab um, a fruity filter, a fruity free filter, put this on low pass. Make sure the frequency is all the way up so it's at a normal frequency rate. Um, automation clip, that's going to allow you to uh, shift e any knob in FL Studios um, on the timeline so you can see where exactly it comes in, where it goes out. So once we get create automation clip, it'll open up in the nearest open channel. Uh, I'm going to put this down to where uh, my sounds are for that part that I need a uh, low pass filtered. And if you right click, you're able to create um, kind of like a, a point. So this is like me putting the, the filter down. And you can do it the other way with uh, the high pass filter. So now, with this, this is currently in 10, I'm going to put this in 11. <laughs> 